so there is vast upside exploration potential for increasing silver mineralization, not only high grade down dip from Diablo, but also a long strike. And if we are fortunate in finding enough mineralization between the two pits, we could actually join them together in one big super pit. So lots of upside potential right here. And that would be multi-decades worth of potential production. There are very, very few pure silver mines in existence. Candelaria is one of the exceptions. I would say about 95% of the mineralization here is silver, but right now it's a pure silver mine. And they are very rare and very uh, few pure silver mines, and there's very few good pure silver companies in existence. Silver One's goal is to become another major silver uh, producing uh, mine. I'm in Hawthorne, Nevada, which is in Mineral County, Nevada. This is in Southwest Nevada, and I'm gonna be checking out Silver One Resources Candelaria project, which is about uh, an hour south of here. And Nevada is often known as a gold mining state, but actually historically, Nevada is more known for silver mining. In fact, when you look at one of the roadsides here in Nevada, you will often see that it will say the silver state. So Nevada is the silver state, even though for the last 30 plus years, it's really known as a gold mining state with the Carlin type gold deposits and such. But uh, the project I'm gonna go see today, the Candelaria project, this project has been around for about 150 years. Mexican prospectors actually discovered this project 150 years ago, and it's been mined on and off since then. Uh, Kinross and Silver Standard has, have also been previous owners of this project, and there's been 68 million ounces of silver that has already been mined from this project. But what is very interesting is that there's actually 127 million ounces of silver, historic resources, still at this project, and about 48 million ounces of silver are sitting on a leach pad, which could most easily and most quickly come into production. So I'm gonna be meeting up with Greg Crow. He is the president and CEO of Silver One Resources. We're gonna be driving down there, and I'm gonna give you a little uh, first-hand take through this video footage of what that project looks like and the potential upside for investors. So come with me and join me right now. Uh, here we are at the Candelaria Pass Producing Mine Site and uh, it's been in uh, was in production for a very long period of time. First discovered in uh, 1846, a year before the end of the U.S. Civil War. Uh, from that time forward, although it mined periodically and intermittently, but overall the average grade of the mineralization up until 1959 uh, was uh, over a thousand grams per ton silver, average about 1,250 grams per ton silver. That's over 40 ounces per ton silver and that was a lot of uh, that was a lot of uh, uh, mining activity from these near-surface high-grade veins. It converted into open-pit mining in the uh, 1970s, first by Occidental, then Nerco, and then Kinross took it over in the 1990s and uh, produced up until 1997, when the price of silver uh, collapsed uh, on the international markets with the collapse of the Asian tiger economies and the Brex uh, fallout etc. Silver prices went well under $5 per ounce and uh, I think they actually hit $2.50 per ounce. So they shut down the mine, started reclamation and then Silver Standard came along in 2001, 2002 um, and uh, bought it off of Kinross. They did a big drill program, outlined a very sizable resource. They did some metallurgical testing and they were uh, looking at potentially reprocessing, particularly from the heaps as an initial processing start. but. Um, with silver prices well under $5 per ounce silver, they didn't recover until 2003, 2004. Then uh, they decided uh, they would go on to other projects. They put this on the shelf and it sat there until uh, 2016 when 
Silver One walked through the door and um, decided that uh, we'd have a look at some of uh, Silver Standard Silver properties. Unbeknownst to me at the time, they were actually about to rebrand their company, become SSR Mining, but they were selling off all of their old silver resources. And uh, we lucked into uh, Candelaria, so we ended up doing a deal on Candelaria. I think it was a pretty good deal for the company. We structured it over a three-year period as an option agreement and we um, uh, essentially structured it so that we made four payments, one on signing, one on each anniversary of US $1 million each in silver one shares. No cash. So we have one more payment due in January of 2020 in which case we will have 100% of the Candelaria Silver Project. Not only were the existing open pits evidence of the Candelaria Project's unique mineral endowment, but so also were the old stamp mill, the graveyard in view of the Northern Bell Pit, and the remnants of the city that rose up as a result of the silver boom here. Soon after arriving at site, and unlike remote projects, it was clear to see that the Candelaria project has several key things working to its advantage. It's easily accessed by paved road, there's already electricity on site, and water is also right there at the project. Our first stop was at the building housing Silver One's drill samples. You'll see that uh, these are some of the samples, and uh, as we wander through, there's a lot more samples. And this is our prep area here. These are samples from the Sonic drilling. Yeah, these are Sonic drilling samples. So there's 1,100 samples, and uh, yeah, careful of the uh, Cord here. But, uh, we do have active hydro, so. More samples. Exactly how they sorted them. More samples. More samples. And we've got more samples. So that's, uh, essentially, we have lots of room here to uh, facilitate uh, core racks. We're about to begin. Uh, uh, core sampling uh, in about a week's time, so we're going to be using this facility for uh, uh, splitting all the core and then it's going to go to uh, assay lab in Marine for analysis. Within view of the drill sample building was one of the two large leach pads which combined host over 48 million ounces of silver. On the initial ride in, Greg discussed the advancement of and possible near-term production from the leach pads, as well as the exploration upside of the entire project. This is 48 million ounces still sits on the old leach pads at an average grade of over 40 grams per ton silver or about an ounce and a half per ton silver. Now why is that important? Well we can look at other uh, leaching operations in the uh, silver state of Nevada and we're looking look at uh, Coor Mining's Rochester mine. Uh, they're producing from near surface uh, oxide silver material and they're leaching with cyanide and they're producing at an average head grade of 15 grams per ton of silver. So can we make a go of old material at 40, uh, 45 grams per ton of silver? Um, we're doing our metallurgical testing right now and hopefully we will be able to say in the not too distant future that we're going to be able to do some near-term uh, recovery of silver from those old heaps. But that's not the end of the story for Candelaria. They left a lot of mineralization ground, particularly along the northern margins of the old leach, of the old uh, pits. Uh, they drilled off a very sizable resource. They also intercepted some down dip high grade uh, results. The best one was 14 meters of 670 grams per ton silver. And uh, we've got a drill moving on to the property probably within the next five to seven days. And uh, we are going to be testing really some of that high grade underground. We're going to continue testing our uh, metallurgical tests 
on the old heaps. Plus in the drilling, we're going to uh, um, twin a couple of the old silver standard holes and update the historic 43101 to current. We're also going to be looking at some big geophysical mag anomalies that occur a long strike to the west. A lot of old historic workings with good silver and a little bit of gold grades that extend off to the west and to the east. And we may put down a couple of drill holes just to test that huge geophysical anomaly. So we're very active in uh, 2019 uh, going into 2020 and expect to see a lot of news flow coming out of Candelaria over the next three to four to five months. Next, we headed on toward the Northern Bell Open Pit. Hey, Northern Bell Pit. This was uh, some of the last operations that took place. Very steep, as you can see, but what they were doing is if you look in the far wall, you're going to see some material, and you're going to see essentially light and dark layers that kind of abut against the dark brown horizon. That dark brown horizon hitting onto the pit wall is all mineralization, okay? And it dips probably 60 to 70 degrees in this direction, heading over towards uh, the heap uh, which you had. This is all overlying material, and of course, as you get deeper and further along, there's more and more material that has to be Legally, there's still quite a mineralization problem in the football there. How much, we don't know yet. Uh, hopefully that will come to light in the not too distant future. As you can see, just on the upper side of the pit, what remains of the town of Candelaria. Two buildings, you can see there. And the old town is somewhere in that pile in the far distance there. So we're gonna actually drive by there. We're gonna drive by the old stamp mill. Georgian pit, which is a long strike, as I said, a long strike in either direction for about two kilometers um, to the west of uh, uh, Mount Diablo pit and another two kilometers east of the, sorry, Mount Diablo pit. No, this is the uh, Northern Bell pit and then to the uh, west of Mount Diablo pit, which we're going to go to next, are old workings, adits, shafts, and uh, all sort of the sites of all the mining that took place from 1864 forward until the 1970s. From the Northern Bell Pit, we then stopped at the massive Mount Diablo open pit. To get a good view, this is the Diablo pit. Uh, you can see they're still uh, working away at it when they shut it down. You can see the workings over there. Um, quite a bit of material was taken out of here. I don't know the exact tonnage, but what's interesting is the mineralization. Uh, if we go down there and look back, you're going to see the mineralization dips much more shallowly to the north than it does in the northern bell pit. And it's offset from the northern bell pit, and the interpretation is the two have been fault offset, and this is being rotated up or the other one's being rotated down. We don't know. But this one here is the one. If you go to the north, just in that direction, you're getting intercepts of depth up to 14 meters, to 670 grams per ton of silver. So there's a high-grade zone just down there under those bluffs right there. That's going to be part of our drilling target coming up here in the next few weeks. And as Raul pointed out, is in the base of the pit, there's still about 6 million ounces of silver. That's still amenable to open pit mining that they haven't gotten yet. Now, how much more of that can be expanded along strike and down dip? I guess we have to do more drilling to find out, but that is easily accessible mineralization. The beauty of that is if we want to uh, get early production from the heaps at an average grade of 44, 45 grams per ton silver, we could augment that with this material that is probably averaging somewhere between 90 and 110 grams per ton silver. So we not only that, we would increase the recoveries as well. So it could go from the high 30s, low 40s in some of the earlier processing methods up to the 50s and 60s 
percent of recoveries. And if we do the fine milling, we might go from 75 up to 85 or something like that. We don't know. We're just in the preliminary stages of the metallurgical testing. And uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll let you know as soon as we can. Right behind this uh, well, field, there are 4 million tons of material that uh, were dumped when uh, they were mining this uh, pit. That was considered uh, low grade then, but it's actually uh, good enough for leaching today. We have uh, 0.75 uh, uh, ounces per ton, and uh, that makes up a significant amount of uh, material that can be added to what we're gonna be leaching in the leach bed. And you can see the uh, pit here, and it's not quite as obvious with the shadows, but if you look, the dip is more like about 40 to 45 degrees on the mineralization, heading down in that direction. And uh, when they drill, they'll be intercepting some of the down dip mineralization from the pit here, which is part of the resource that was outlined by Silver Stand. What was mined in the past came from this pit. This is the Diablo pit in the Northern Bell. But the targets that we have, one is the down deep extension. And if we confirm what has already been delineated, uh, we'll have one super pit that will uh, communicate the Diablo with the Northern Bell. So everything that you see in between the Diablo and the Northern Bell, below that uh, machine and below the truck, is potentially mineable. We know that some of it is already mineable, but we are looking to extend it and delineate the underground high-grade material. So that is one of the uh, uh, parts of the oxide. And the rest, it is a long strike along the west and along the east. Leaving the Mount Diablo pit, we headed upward to the highest point of the project on top of the northern bell pit. On the way, Greg pointed out the significant exploration upside to the west of the northern bell pit. So if you look uh, straight ahead of us, you're looking at a hillside uh, just behind the power line. And uh, that hillside, you'll see multiple old workings on it. Little uh, piles, little pits, little adits that uh, extend along the length of that entire hill. And that's the extension. That's the western extension outwards from the northern bell pit. And um, quite a bit of uh, silver and gold mineralization uh, have been taken from samples collected all along through there. So that's a big future exploration uh, uh, potential extension to the entire system that was overlooked during the period of open pit mining uh, post-1960. That's why we can probably fast track this once right. we get our metallurgical work done. And, uh, we know that uh, we're going to be proceeding. But what we did was we drove in through here past the leach pads. We stopped there. We went up and looked at the Diablo pit, or sorry, the uh, Northern Belt pit, and then into the Diablo pit. And now we've come around and we drove up past the low grade stockpile. And we're right now here at stop number five, which is called the Lucky Line. Doesn't look very lucky to me, but uh, uh, that's what they called it. Now, what's interesting is if, I don't know if you remember what I said, was the mineralization in the northern bell pit dips steeply to the north. The mineralization in Diablo dips much more shallowly to the north. But these two pits seem to be offset, and we think there's a bit of a cross fault. What's uh, interesting is Lucky Strike, sitting over here at Lucky, is southwest of the northern bell pit and if the extension is actually in this direction towards the Georgine pit and up onto our new claims up and through there 
Why is there mineralization way back on the lucky pit? Is there a second sit, set, or a second system that's never been exploited? We don't know. We need to get out and do more exploration. As I said, after the small scale miners stopped working here, and then it became an open pit operation, all of the exploration and emphasis was on those two pits. All this area just stayed dormant and is ripe for further exploration and upside potential. Okay. Okay, what we're going to see here is you've got the Diablo pit in the distance over there. You're getting a pretty good perspective of it. And here is the Lucky Pit. If the Lucky Pit is the continuation of the mineralization from the Diablo, then what's the continuation of the mineralization from the Northern Bell? Side there are there two systems and they haven't been exploited we don't know so we need to do more exploration we're going to walk up on the hillside and from the top of the hill you're going to see a panorama of all three pits and plus you'll see the two big leech pads in the distance and you'll see the highway so you get a good panoramic uh, perspective of the entire property we then concluded our tour at the Georgine Pit. On the way, Raoul shared an interesting historical fact about the naming of Pit Candle, which is part of Candelaria. Uh, mineralization in Candelaria is hosted in two major structures. One is called the Lower Candelaria uh, uh, Shear, and the other is the Pit Handle Frost. The Pit Handle uh, comes from uh, uh, tools that the miners use for their uh, trade, but uh, also because in, in the bars where where miners used to hang out, uh, they used to have uh, commonly fights, and they used to uh, fight each other with the pick handles, and uh, more, uh, they used to even kill each other with those pick handles. This is called the Georgine Pit, uh, just in behind me, which is several hundred meters, almost a kilometer to the west of the Northern Bell Pit. This was a small pit that was operated by Kinross. Not a lot of mineralization was taken out of here and uh, obviously they were having much more success at the Northern Bell and the Mount Diablo. But the important thing about the Georgian Pit is it shows that a long strike continuation of the mineralization. This is just on the northern side of the hill from where we were before on the southern hot side. We saw all of those old workings that marched off to the west. So this is part of the western extension. What's interesting about this area is just in a little dump pile over there, you start seeing things like this here. And you can pass that around. And you'll see that that has a lot of copper mineralization in it. If you remember, or if you heard me say, that in the northern bell pit there are actually veins of gem quality turquoise turquoise being a copper oxide mineral it is so high gem quality that locals and local gemologists come and take samples and market it as candelaria turquoise for jewelry purposes so there's a copper system sitting underneath us What's also interesting, we just completed an airborne geophysical survey that covers this area to the west of the pit and over the pit. There is a very large magnetometer anomaly which comes along the northern margin of the pit and extends up here past Georgine and up into this new area that we've just recently staked. The signature is reminiscent of what's called an IOCG target. Iron, oxide, copper, gold. Those types of deposits can be very, very high grade, very, very lucrative. Some examples of some of the larger ones in the world include Olympic Dam in Australia, which also has an interesting uranium component. Uh, the Candelaria Scarn deposit in Chile is also another example, just happens to be named the same as our property here called Candelaria. 
and one that's closer to home that has made quite a bit of news over the last uh, 10 to 15 years is Nevada Copper's uh, project just outside of Yarrington, Nevada. And um, that's uh, uh, still undergoing development and they're getting some pretty high grade copper with a little bit of uh, gold at that one. This one, we've analyzed some of these rocks. We're getting up to two and a half percent copper. We're getting uh, grades like uh, 50, 60 grams per ton silver and uh, upwards of a gram gold. So there's a system sitting under here. And uh, um, we need to get busy and start evaluating it. If you look back over just between the two vehicles there, you're gonna see a little stick with uh, some pink flagging on it. That's actually a drill site that we've picked in order to test this big geophysical anomaly. After viewing the Georgine pit, Greg reviewed the plans to advance Candelaria and the potential upside this project provides investors. Our job is uh, multifold. First of all, we're going to continue our metallurgical studies of the old heaps, averaging about 45 grams per ton silver. Can we bring those into an early production situation? We're doing our metallurgical testing right now. But the bigger upside of the Candelaria project does not lie on the heaps. The heaps might give us somewhere eight to ten years worth of production, but the big upside comes from the hard rock mineralization. Silver Standard, when they're drilling, outlined, uh, measured and indicated about 44 million ounces, another 30 million ounces inferred of silver just on the northern uh, down dip extension from the two big open pits. But what's a long strike? What's between the two big pits? We're currently drilling. We're gonna be updating that historic 43101 to current. We're going to be looking at extensions to the mineralization, which uh, the area outside the pits was not explored uh, prior to 1960 when the big companies started moving in and looking at open pit uh, mining. Everything concentrated on that. So there is vast upside exploration potential for increasing silver mineralization not only high grade down dip from Diablo but also a long strike and if we are fortunate in finding enough mineralization between the two pits we could actually join them together in one big super pit so lots of upside potential right here and that would be multi decades worth of potential production there are very very, very few pure silver mines in existence and there's very few good pure silver companies in existence you might be able to say name 10 maybe perhaps 15 uh, pure silver uh, not uh, silver focused companies with dominant silver so uh, silver one's goal is to become another major silver uh, producing uh, mine So that's what they used to say. Sorry, you gotta say it again. I forgot to turn on the mic for him. <laughs> <laughs>